How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be talking about my first impressions of the Canon EOS R6, specifically when it comes to video. I'm gonna try to keep this video pretty short and just kind of rapid fire through these um, just because there's so many videos already out there about this camera and so many articles and everything. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about it. So I'm just gonna talk super briefly about the things that I like and the things that I don't like, and I'm gonna do six for each. So with that being said, let's get started. So I've already filmed a few things with this camera. Um, I've shot a few like cinematic B-roll sequences of food and coffee. Um, I did, for those of you who saw my last video, I took a day trip to Naples, Florida and I did a little like short travel film um, that came out in my opinion really nice and I was super happy with it. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Um, I've been getting a lot of love on it, so I really appreciate it. And I've also shot a podcast for about 40 minutes where this is like the third camera that I use for just one of the angles of the host and a couple other things here and there just for fun. So I feel like I do have a good grasp on this camera as far as video goes. Um, and in the future, I will do a separate video for photos, but right now I'm gonna only talk about video. So like I said before, I'm just gonna rapid fire through these. So I'm gonna start with the things that I like. The first one being the image quality. And I don't know if it's because I'm coming from an older camera that wasn't that good and wasn't filming in 4K, but even besides that, I filmed a lot of stuff in 4K before even 6K and 8K. And to be honest, I've, I'm actually super impressed with the 4K footage of this camera. Um, and I'm not gonna show any clips or anything like that because again, I'm sure you guys have seen a ton, but the image quality, especially when I bring it up into Premiere, is really freaking good and it's a really good starting point, um, especially when shooting in C-Log to color correct and color grade and all of that fun stuff. The second point, and it's actually something I feel like not enough people are talking about, is the low light capability of this camera. And obviously I'm not gonna compare it to the A7S III or even the A7S II or the Black Magic or the you know, Panasonics or anything like that. This isn't a comparison video. Um, but surprisingly, this camera has done so well in low light. There's been so many scenarios that I've been in that I had to like bump up the ISO in order to expose properly for C-Log. And honestly, like I've had zero issues with the noise and the, with the noise and the grain just looking distracting or just too much. Um, it actually does really well. And it's not a low light beast and you shouldn't get this camera if you're only shooting in low light. However, I actually do think it's better than a lot of people think that it is. The third thing, which I'm not gonna talk too much about because you already know all about this and pretty much all these cameras coming out have it, is the autofocus. The autofocus has been so good on this camera and not just for subjects and people and animals, but even just for random stuff like, you know, walls and just random like cars and subjects that are just moving across your frame. This camera does really good at just tracking uh, focus and just does really good at figuring out exactly what you wanna focus on and when you wanna focus on it. The fourth thing is the stabilization, obviously, Everyone knows about the stabilization on this camera. It's been really fun to use, especially it's nice not being able to stress having to use a gimbal wherever you go. And the look that you get with the stabilization on this camera is really nice where you still see some handheld motion, but you just don't get any of the nasty shakes. And I've really enjoyed using this camera because of the stabilization. The fifth thing is just the handling and the user interface of this camera. I'm new to Canon, I've, I've used Canons, but I never owned a Canon before. And I've already figured out this camera like 100%. The menu system super intuitive. Um, when you're filming, all the things you can do, touching the touchscreen and it being able to focus with the touchscreen, changing settings with the touchscreen, where all the buttons are, everything just flows and is super intuitive and it's just really easy to use. And the final minor thing that I really like about this camera is having dual card slots. It's just really nice having the option to choose which card slot to choose, you know, shoot photos and videos with or just to shoot video and photos to both and just have like two copies of them. I've really enjoyed having the option. So now moving into the things that I don't like about this camera. The first one, like you could guess, is the overheating. Um, I haven't had it happen to me too much, especially with my style of the shooting where I'm really just shooting small uh, bursts of footage and stuff like that. But it has happened to me once when I was filming that podcast. Um, it was like a 40, 45 minute podcast and my camera overheated at 25 minutes and 4K, 24 frames a second. Um, what's nice is you are able to just go back to 1080, which is what I did. Obviously, it's not convenient in post-production and you don't get the same quality. However, um, what's nice is that you can keep recording, you just can't record in 4K. The other really annoying thing when it comes to overheating is if you are shooting photos, let's say just doing like street photography and then you wanna shoot some 4K footage, 
if you've been shooting photos for a long period of time, your camera will be giving you the overheating um, warning and you don't know exactly how long you have left to record in 4K, which is annoying, but you know, it's something to just kind of work around and you can always use 1080 as well. The second thing that I've struggled to like with this camera is not having 120 frames a second in 4K. It's an annoying workflow when you have everything in 4K except your slow motion clip clips. So then it's just hard to kind of match up the quality. And honestly, the 1080 on this camera doesn't look that great, specifically when you're comparing it next to the 4K image quality, right? So it would be nice to have 4K 120 frames a second, even if it was in small burst, just to kind of avoid, just to kind of avoid the loss of image quality you get between these 4K clips and 60 and 24 frames a second, and then the 1080 120 frames a second. So. It's worse than I thought it was gonna be, but it's still something, again, that I've just been able to work around, no big deal. The third thing which kind of goes with that is the workflow with this camera, besides the 4K files being pretty big, the workflow have, with having a timeline that's mixed between 4K and 1080, because I do film a lot of 120 FPS footage, is annoying. So far, what's worked for me is just downscaling my 4K footage on the timeline, but then exporting everything um, in 4K, so then the 1080 upscales to 4K, and then the 4K exports in 4K. So far, that's what I figured works best for me. However, I'm still not 100% sure in what the workflow should be with me in Premiere Pro. The fourth thing that I don't like about this camera, which is very minor, is the LCD screen. It's not bad, but it's not great. So obviously it's flip out LCD screen. Yes, it's touch screen and it's good to use. But when you're in bright daylight, even on the brightest setting, I feel like the image quality is just like not there and it's just hard to see and it's just not the best looking LCD screen that I've held. Um, especially compared to some of like the other Sony's that I've used and stuff like that. So the fifth thing I've been struggling with with this camera, and it could be something on my um, user error partially, is the dynamic range has been kind of not that great. I feel like I've been having to work really hard, specifically with the C-Log files, to just get the dynamic range that I want. It hasn't been horrible, but it hasn't been the best compared to some of the other cameras that I've used. Um, and again, it could just be me learning how to you know, expose for C-Log and how to grade for C-Log and color correct for C-Log and all that stuff. But it is something that I've noticed I've had to put a lot more effort into getting the dynamic range that I want, specifically in like really harsh lighting conditions. And then finally, the last thing I don't like about this camera is it's been a little bit buggy. So there's been a few times where we're recording video where I be trying to focus on something and then it just won't be auto focusing and I switch to manual focus and it won't even switch to manual focus and my camera would just be stuck in like the same spot. And then I'd try to like turn it off and it wouldn't even turn off and I would have to like just take out the battery. It's only happened to me like two or three times. And since the last firmware update, it's gone away completely. So I don't know if it's something they fixed or it's just it hasn't happened to me. And that is it. Those are all the things that I like and dislike about this camera so far, at least the six main things that I can think about. But overall, um, this camera has just been so awesome to use. And I'll be making future videos on this camera. I just want to make this video to get something out this week and to just kind of give my first impression thoughts on the R6. If you are thinking about getting this camera or you're comparing a ton of different cameras on the market right now, I do hope this video helped you. And if it did, I really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you could comment down below what you think, that'd be cool too. And please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And that's it. Create and repeat guys, I will see you guys in the next video. And go check out my last video if you haven't because I was really happy with it. Peace.